All right, first and foremost, I want to talk about something having to do with Yoshimitsu. Now, Moonsaw Slayer already made a video having to do with an individual that made a Google Docs showcasing the nerfs and buffs of Yoshimitsu to basically his wish list as to what he thinks will be appropriately a good way of nerfing or buffing the character, right? Now, I already made a previous video having to do with what my thoughts are with Yoshimitsu being in what tier he is in the tier list, right? That some people consider him to be S tier, others may not think so. I'm still a little bit in the stage where I think that he's not S tier. I still think that maybe he's at least A or A plus, but the more that I look into his gameplay, and the more that I come across other Yoshimitsu players online, as well as the ones that are in my Discord, if you also want to hop onto my Discord, I'll link it to the description, or i put it up right here on screen, so that, that way you guys, if you ever want to hop on, you can hop on. But, you know, you can just click on the link, and then you can hop on to the Discord channel. Either way, when I fought them with the characters that I've been maining and switching back and forth, I started to see exactly the same particular issues that why players tend to hate Yoshimitsu so much, like his strong unblockables, his movesets, having to do with his Oki setups and all that, right? His outrageous amounts of damage that he's able to pull off once he get, catches you off guard with a combo launcher, and so forth, right? And now, I'm at a point that I'm starting to agree with the community. I'm starting to agree with the community that, that Yoshimitsu is not exactly far off from being an S tier character. Let's get into exactly to the point, again, to the video because I like to ramble too much. And that has to do with the nerfs of the individual that speaks out in the Google Docs. Now, I know this individual. I haven't even spoken with this individual. I hang out with him a couple of times whenever we do our little, like, uh, sessions with, you know, our sparring and whatnot. And when he does come to play, you know, we always talk. We always talk about what's going on in the game. And he mentioned about that Moonsaw Slayer made a video having to do with one of the things that he made with his Google Docs having to do with the nerfs with Yoshimitsu. So that's what I'm gonna do as well right here. Now I'm going to simply go through everything quickly because Moonsaw Slayer already went through them. So I'm gonna do it as well, but I'm gonna do them as quickly as possible so that way you guys don't get bored. So here are the nerfs first and then we'll go into the buffs. Making heat 1-1, one, one, not a counter hit launch and remove wolf splat and make it only lock down. So he's talking about this. How if you do 1-1 one, one on hit, not on block. I forgot to turn off the stupid settings. He means that, right? Now, if you're in no sword stance or in heat, doesn't matter. This counter hit launches the opponent so that if you do manage to get this hit off, you can combo right afterwards. Now, you can also get yourself a wall splat with this move. As long as you are in no sword stance and you hit them, doesn't matter if the last hit hits or the first hit, if you do so, it gives you a wall splat. And something else that some people may not know about this, mostly the more well-known uh, experienced Yoshimitsu players know this, that if you are at a certain distance from the opponent, let's say, and let's say you go for the 1-1, you get yourself a bound. You can re-pick up the opponent off from the ground by doing down 2-2-2. Two, two, two. So in this case, I do kind of agree with this mentality. At first, I didn't in one of the videos that I made that I like the idea that the move itself should give you a counter hit launch because it gives them a lot of more pressure variety against the opponent. Because in my opinion, I don't think that Yoshimitsu has really good pressure tools. But that is if you think about it in the sense that it, this is a move that's 10 frames. A 10 frame move having the ability to not just only wall splat and in the same category has the ability to also counter hit launch in the last hit is way too strong. It's essentially a much better tool than in a case of Heihachi's 112 if you think about it in a certain sense. Because unlike with Heihachi's 112, if he manages to use the move and you block it, it is more than what, 16 to 17 frames on block? Meaning you can punish him with a launch. But you can't punish Yoshimitsu if he does this. It's minus nine. So that makes sense to me that now that I'm looking at it with a much more uh, enlightened, <laughs> I guess enlightened sense of sensibilities when it comes to the characters that I play now, that yeah, I do think that nerfing this move, at least knocking it down and not just giving you the wall splat or giving you the, the counter hit launch 
if you're in those sort of standards or in heat. Now, the one thing that some players don't know is that you also have the same properties if you're in those sort of stance and you're just doing down one. And if you're counter hitting, same thing, it launches. So are we also going to remove the aspect of down one? And if you also know about this, if you do down four, three, one, it also wall splats. And it also launches. So are we doing that to that move as well? Are we nerfing down four, three, one? I feel that in the case of one, one, we should nerf it. But for these other two moves, I think we should keep the properties that it has. Second thing that he mentions is decreasing the overall combo damage and the overall damage he gets while he's in heat. I agree with this. As you already know, while he is in heat, all of his moves, this includes his 1-1, one, one, this includes his 3-1, this includes his, let's say, Dragonfly 4 one plus 2, all of his moves that are enhanced while he's in heat, basically the moves that are usually used in his no sword stance, and the few new ones that he's using while he's in his heat stance while without having to use the say no sword stance, are all enhanced and give him more damage. So I think that the overall aspect, not just, it's not just even the fact that if you're in heat, it's just overall that Yoshimitsu has way too much damage for a character that has so much utility in his gameplay set. So by nerfing it significantly, so that way it makes and breaks the overall idea that okay, if he's going to have all these utilities, then at least make it so that his damage is comparable to some kind of give and take in this case. Make it so that instead of a full combo, he does like around 70 damage. Let's just make it so that he does instead maybe 60 damage or maybe 58 damage. Like somewhere in comparison to the say Tekken 7 levels of damage. 54, 55, 57 damage, depending how much he optimized the overall component of his combo starters and whatnot, he'll get about that much. He might get more depending if he decides to go for something big like let's say Kensho back to one. He can go for big damage, but that's only if he goes for the big boy starters, right? Now, he stated to me that he doesn't really agree with the idea of making it to the damage levels of Tekken 7 where he was before. But the thing is, is that if he's going to have all of these utilities, I'm, I apologize if you hear the background noise, it's the police. I live in New York, so of course, you know, you're going to have these moments. So with that in mind, I think that at least nerfing the damage component to at least to that point, to T7 levels, makes sense to me. But he doesn't agree with that. He, he, he thinks that maybe it's better to just, maybe just lower it down this a bit, maybe like, I don't know. I don't, I, he doesn't really give me he didn't really give me a number but if I was to say if I was to like get around to what he's thinking maybe about five percent less damage maybe five percent five percent less I don't even know I, I'm not even good with numbers to be honest but I'm just saying that it could be like around there like you guys can can then decide for yourselves in the comment section like how much damage he should be doing outputting from a certain combo now next thing he mentions about flash he mentions that flash should be nerfed to where when on block, in this case if you're in no sword stance, it should be minus 20, not minus 15. And he also mentions in the next nerf after that, basically these coincides together, uh, my voice cracked, that flash should also be easier to basically whiff punish on reaction, right? In my opinion, these coincide together because if you're gonna make it minus 20, then it would also mean that because it's minus 20 frames, it's E, not minus 20, but let's say just overall, that it's gonna be minus 20 on block, so it might mean that the overall recovery of the flash is gonna be slower too. So that means that it's easier to actually see that, okay, he it has whipped the move, or he has bl you blocked the move of flash, so you have an easier time to basically, you know, use a down forward two launch, or a hop kick, or if you have a move, that's either around like let's say 17 to 18 frames that can launch the opponent right i think that's fair to me that they if they would do that with yoshimitsu's flash because i do understand that for a move that's so good that on hit gives you back to two if you're in your regular stance and then if you're in your no sword stance it gives you a full launch and even though the overall range of it is piss poor mind you it is piss poor you can't, you can't hit this unless you're very close and it has to be at a certain axis too as you can see, you'll whiff it unless you're in those sword stance. But even if the range itself, in my opinion, is piss poor, the fact that it is six frames on startup on the regular stance and eight frames in your no sword stance or in heat is already a big takeaway. It makes the move extremely strong for the fact that it's able to do that 
against the opponent. So giving it the one weakness that if you whip the move or if the opponent blocks it, make it at least minus 20. I do agree with Kobe there. Next thing he mentions is about 4 1 plus 2. So 4 1 plus 2 is minus 12 on block. It's already punishable on block if you see the move and you block it. But he's talking about that he wants it to be launch punishable. Now I agree with him. And the reason why has to do with the fact that if you are in no sword stance, this move has outrageous amounts of range. For a homie move that is. As you see it whiffs on that range, but if I'm like right here, it hits. If I'm in no sword stance. And if I'm in heat. And the fact that it's homing, so if you do attempt to sidestep him or sidewalk him, he will still hit you of doing so. And if you're in heat, it gives him a full launch with a heat dash. So this move has to give something. It has to give something. If it's gonna have these traits, then at least make it so that it's launch punishable. And I do agree with him on that. Now, the thing about it is that it kind of in the thing is I want to go to the section where it has to do with the buffs that he wants to talk about but I'm just saying anyways. He mentions that he will like the old 4 1 plus 2 move from Tekken 7 which looks very similar to the one where he does in Heat Burst. It's the same basically the same animation and it will be cool that they do bring it back and he also states that giving the same properties that it had in Tekken 7 like the fact that it also had the properties to counter hit launch the opponent if it landed on the opponent and removing the heat uh, engage component of 4 1 plus 2. So com essentially completely changing the overall uh, animation and set of properties of 4 1 plus 2 back to the old attack that he has in Tekken 7 with 4 1 plus 2. The only difference that he mentions in the buff section about this move is that while you're in heat, you keep the 4 1 plus 2 version that we have now in, in Tekken 8. That's the one thing he mentions while also stating that if you go into this move and you go into heat dash it should no longer give you a full launching combo it should just give you like let's say something on the lines of his 4-2 in kenjo stance that it gives you just that instead so i think i kind of agree with it but i don't know i, I kind of feel a little biased with this I would like to keep the launch, uh, you know, from 4 1 plus 2 in heat, but up to you guys what you guys think about it. I'm a little neutral here. I don't really know if I like the idea of removing the heat dash, but everything else, making it launch punishable on block, as well as removing the homing properties of the move, I do agree with that. Now, he mentioned something else about making CD1 only activate when just using CD1. CD1 is essentially this move. It's Gelsen, right? Now you perform this like a DP motion, like a, a dragon, I think it's called Dragon Punch? Yeah, Dragon Punch. And then there's another version called uh, Geho Sen again, <laughs> but you do it with down 4 1 plus 4. Or just pressing, just pressing it like this. Now the difference between those two moves is that they have different startup frames. CD1 is 17 to 18 frames, my voice starts again. And then you have your down forward 1 plus 4 which is 20 frames to 21 frames on startup. Now, the thing that he mentions in the nerf section is that he wants to remove this input, the down forward 1 plus 4 input, and only keep the CD1 uh, version. The reason why is that since a lot of Yoshimitsu players love to go for the Samurai Cutter, right? And if they use this to bait the opponent to then essentially duck and catch him off guard with the down forward 1 plus 4, now the thing that he didn't know, I don't think he knew, when I mentioned it to him, he didn't know that you can actually perform Geho Sen while crouch by doing a CD1. It's a little hard. So you can actually do it while you're crouched. But it is much more difficult to perform than doing just simply pressing down forward into 1 plus 4. So if you want to make him harder overall, I think that's fine with me. I just need to learn how to, you know, perform it while crouched. It's like doing a slide kick, essentially. So I think giving him an easier input is fine with me. But if they do remove it because of the, you know, the overall consensus of people thinking, let's remove that a particular input, I'm fine with it. I'll just have to learn how to perform it with the regular input. 
Then he mentions get rid of healing while attacking. So this is a really a big thing. A lot of uh, players also agree with this. At least the ones that are complaining a lot about Yoshimitsu's gameplay. That they want to remove the healing completely out of Yoshimitsu's gameplay. Now, here's the thing. Healing was a, comp a core component in his gameplay overall. I don't know if it was a core component in previous games, like older Tekken games, like Tekken 3, uh, 1, 2, of course, 4, 5, those versions besides Tekken 7, that he was able to heal from stances, like meditation stance and Indian stance. And of course, if he does go into med stance and does 1 plus 2, he heals a chunk of health back by doing so, right? But it's very, very risky because you are completely vulnerable. This is an attack, by the way. But again, very risky. So by removing the aspect of completely removing the healing properties of attacks, this kind of removes the vision that the developers had with Tekken 8 Yoshimitsu by giving him the ability to actually gain health from attacks, right? So I don't know if they're gonna do that in general. But the thing is that he also mentions in one of his buffs section that he thinks that if they're gonna remove, let's say, the entirety of healing, and if they were to do that, he mentions in the pro section of buffs that buff the healing from his mess stance and Indian stance. To be completely honest, even if this game is more aggressive, if you do backpedal a lot with Yoshimitsu, you see how much I'm able to get away from the opponent? Of course, they can run at me if they want to. But if I do this, and then I decide to then stop for a bit to heal, and I and I heal a bit, I like a big, big portion of, of my overall healing by just going to these stances, I can tell you it would probably be a lot worse than just attacking the opponent and getting the healing from there. So I don't think they will are willing enough to buff his healing component into his stances, but they'll just probably just make it so that he's able to just raw heal from his stances in general. Just that they won't buff the overall increase of healing. Then the next big thing that he mentions is removing the chip damage from his attacks, like certain attacks that he uses. So essentially what he's talking about, that when he uses moves like let's say his Kencho 4 or 1, or his Dragonfly 4 1 plus 2, these moves have a lot of chip damage. Now, if you're in no sword stance, you see that I can take even more from the opponent. Now, you can't do this while in Dragonfly stance because you can't go into Dragonfly stance in no sword stance. But if you're in heat, you see how much I'm able to take out from just doing one move. And another thing that he mentions also, when it comes to this move in general, like his Dragonfly 4 1 plus 2, is that he also wants to reduce, or in this case, re increase the amount of heat it uses. If you were to go into Heat Burst, you're able to do four of these. And you see the amount of chip damage that it's already doing against the opponent. Now, of course, in a real game, it's not like you're gonna allow Yoshimitsu to do this against you. But if it were to happen, that if you were to use it at a certain particular time, you will be dealing a lot of chip damage against the opponent. And mind you, that's from a heat burst. If I heat engage, I have more meter to use against the opponent. So I can legitimately do like maybe five or six more, or in this case in total, of Dragonfly 4 1 plus 2. So he just wants to overall increase the heat consumption when using his Dragonfly 4 1 plus 2 in the game. Then he mentions about getting rid of Wolf Hunting 4 into No Sword Stance by holding back. I, I don't agree with this. I actually like this idea of being able to go into No Sword Stance from Wolf Hunting 4. I don't really think it's a bad thing. I, I understand that, that if you go into it, you have a very powerful tool to use in No Sword Stance, and that is your Flash as well as the fact that you can go and do this move that we just mentioned. But I don't think that it's a big reason to just remove it just because of these two moves alone or other moves that he may use in No Sword Stance. So that's one particular note that I don't agree with. Then he mentions that to make Samurai Cutter, the attack startup frames, to change it to 28 frames and not 26, essentially increasing the frames by two. Now, I agree with this overall simply because of the fact that for a, a character that's able to use an unblockable low even though it is somewhat reactable but some players do have a tough time reacting to it because i have my moments too whenever i do face a yoshimitsu player 
that I'm like a deer in the headlight situation where I just look at the move and I'm like, oh, I should have just hop kicked you. Or I should have just went for a down forward one and I could have hit you from right there and stopped you from using it. Or maybe even size up to the right side and beat it. Or simply just backdash a couple of times and then get away from there. But I still eat up the move. For, again, a move that's an unblockable and it's a low, I do somewhat agree that increasing the overall frame uh, from a startup should at least help players out in distinguishing the move and then punishing the move accordingly. The only thing is, a part of me, the, the bias side of me, <laughs> kind of doesn't want to do that and the reason has to do with one of his you know you know overall unique strong setups and that is the okie setups at the wall if i were to perform my okie setups at the wall and i try to go for my samurai cutter right and i go for samurai cutter usually opponents will get hit immediately they can't react to that it doesn't it doesn't matter if they react to it as fast as possible they will get hit by samurai cutter if i do it exactly as they're about to get up but if it's two frames lenient now then they may have enough time to get up and at least do a crouch jab against me or they may be able to hop kick me if they have a hop kick so that gives them enough opportunities to actually punish yoshimitsu if they have more leniency to getting up and then attacking yoshimitsu when he does samurai cutter so that's the one thing that i kind of feel biased about because it's something that i always use in tekken 7 so having it kind of like losing its potency in Tekken 8 kind of makes me feel some type of way, you know what I'm saying? But if it means a more healthy and tolerable matchup against other players that are having trouble against Yoshimitsu players, then I will say that, yeah, I, I guess nerfing it to around 28 frames seems logical to me. And I think it's a good idea to do so if it means that players would have a better time facing Yoshimitsu at this point. Then he mentions that in the case of Hop Knee or Hop Kick, on block, it is minus 13, right? Now, he's, he is stating that to make it not minus 13, but minus 14 instead. This seems like a more of a slight nitpick of his. Uh, I'm just, you know, I'm not trying to sound, uh, you know, mean or anything like that. I'm just saying that, you know, it seems like a nitpick. In my opinion, I think that if anything, what he should have said is nerfing the overall advantage that it has on crushing highs. I think that that's what it should do instead of like making it minus 14. Because it seems like a it's like a weird change just to make it minus 14 instead of, you know, where is it at now that's minus four, uh, 13. Maybe, I don't know. I mean, it, I don't, I'm not going to say that it's not a good idea. I'm just saying that it's a little weird idea to just make it minus 14. Because I think the only real big problem of Hopkick, in this case, his Hopkick, is that it has the uh, properties to actually high crush moves. It already has the ability to low crush because it is a hop kick. But it has the properties to even high crush. And the reason why that is, is because of this animation. You kind of see, if I put into photo mode, you see where he's kind of like going down when he's doing so? This actually enables him to high crush pokes and whatever that, he, that might come right after him. He's able to go under them and then hit the opponent. So it makes sense to me that removing the aspect, or at least tr trying to make it so that it has uh, a higher hitbox, I guess, or a lower hitbox so that it's, easy, it's easier for simple high jabs or attacks or highs, can still hit Yoshimitsu while he's trying to go for the hop knee. I think that's fair, because one of the overall setups that Yoshimitsu players like to do is this. You see that? The dummy went for a jab. And I went for my Hopney, but I still managed to stop him and catch him off guard with the Hopney. Even though that using my down back four is minus one on hit. So I should still be at a disadvantage because I, it's still not my turn somewhat. I can still like sidestep and do whatever, but either way, I'm attacking right afterwards. So here, I'm actually able to go under the move and hit him with the Hopney. So I do think that removing the high crush property of Hot Knee makes sense to me. At least that makes more sense since, again, it's a move that already low crushes. So high crushing is already like adding too much to the moveset itself, being that it's a move that's minus 13 on block. Even if you were to overall increase the, the overall disadvantage of the move by minus 14, it's still a move that has the ability to high crush moves. So. The only other way that I can think of is make it so that it is actually minus 15. If you think about it, Lars, Lars has a hop kick that is 
uh, similar, right? It's also 15 frames on launch, I think, or is it 16? And it also has the same properties. It, 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 it's also capable of high crushing and low crushing moves. But if you block it, it's minus 26 on block, I think, or minus 25. So it's launch punishable. But with Yoshimitsu, it's not. It's only minus 13. But it still has the same properties that it has high crush and low crush. So if anything, you should just also make it launch punishable. But if not, then keep the high crush and make it high, uh, make it launch punishable, or remove the high crush and still keep it that it's around minus 13 on block. Now the last thing that he mentions that I left for last, because in reality he left this particular nerf, the Hopney, as last, but I'm gonna leave this for last in general for the nerfs. And that is that whenever he's going for the guard break setup, because you know if he does this, which I messed up. As you know, if he does that, and you, the opponent, decide to go for a side okeme or a side roll in this case, you will get hit by the guard break. It does not matter what you do right afterwards, you will always get hit by the move. The only way you can beat it is that you stay grounded onto the ground. And that means you'll still get hit by the initial move anyways. So what he suggests is to make it so that instead of minus 14 for the opponent, make it minus 13 instead. So that way, you can only go for your down forward 1-4, not back 2-2. Two, two. Because again, if you were to perform the particular guard break setup, and let's say you were already in heat, and you do 2-2, two, two, or back 2-2 two, two, I mean, you get the launch. So it's, a, it's already way too strong for what it is. And mind you, and this is funny, for all the ladies in the game, all the female characters in the game, if you perform the guard break setup and they decide to side okay me, and it's, it's a very specific combo setup that you go for with the guard break setup, if you perform it and they decide to get up immediately, they are actually plus 15. Or in this case, you are plus 15 on block with the guard break setup. And this means you can actually launch with down forward two against the opponent or a hop kick. And you can also do this, and this is funny, you can do this against Jin, Leroy, Lee, and Law. For some reason, they are also plus 15 when they get hit by the guard break setup. And that means you can launch them. So yeah, that, that's weird to me. I don't know why it works specifically to those uh, male characters, but the entirety of the female characters, they can all get hit by the move and get launched from the guard break setup. This is why they need to overall nerf it because of how strong it is. I'm, again, I'm going to get a lot of flag from the Yoshi community because they don't agree with that. They actually think that if you stay grounded, that's already good enough as it is. But again, if you think about it in the sense of the community and what they think, if you want a healthy and balanced game, I don't think that giving him the ability to, you know, guard break and then also get the ability to also, if he's in heat, go for a heat dash into a combo. I fucked up the combo. <laughs> then yeah, I don't think it's quite, it's quite fair. Now on to the buffs for Yoshimitsu. Now he mentions that one thing that I kind of do want back in the game is Moonsault Slayer. Not the, not, not the creator, but the actual move itself. This move. Now this move no longer has the properties of being an unblockable. Instead now it does a regular hit and if blocked it does uh, quite a bit of chip damage to might be mindful of, but it doesn't hit through the opponent anymore. It only works if you're in your Indian stance and you press 1, it's still an unblockable at that case. So what he is stating is that bring back the unblockable properties of the move. And I really do agree with this because I rarely ever use this move, ever use this move. There is no point in using it because if you want more damage across from Musa Slayer because of the overall changes they have done to Yoshimitsu, you can get more damage without having to use this as an ender. Because you use this as an ender in T7 with Yoshimitsu and a lot of his combos. But in T8, you'll never use it for no reason whatsoever. What's the point of doing so? When you have better combo routes you can go for. So I do like the idea of at least bringing it back to where it's an unblockable as well. And the other buff that he mentions is that also Dragonfly 1 should also be an unblockable. And not the fact that it just, you know, it's a regular hit, has a bit of chip damage, well, quite a bit depending. And 
that by removing, well, not in no sword stance, by removing the properties of Dragonfly 1, that it has the counter hit, not counter hit, sorry, it's actually a normal hit launcher in heat state, and only while you're in regular state and counter hit, it launches. So he wants that to be removed, and I do agree with that, because I don't really see any use of this move, besides very, uh, very specific moments, or if the opponent does decide to duck, and you use this in heat, okay, you get the launch, but other times, I'll, again, I won't really do that. Especially if they know that I'm about to do something uh, quirky in heat, let's say if I go for a heat engage, and I decide to do this, sorry, not that, and I go into this, then yeah, I, I, don't, I don't see the point. I like the best where in T7, if where the opponent had low health and I want to take them down quickly, I'll just do this <laughs> and then get the win. So I find that that particular buff is also needed. He also mentions it in the list. Then the other thing also is with Samurai Cutter. Since we nerfed the overall starter frames of the move by 28, let's also make it so that it tracks better. So in this case, it has a little bit of leniency. If you do step to the right side, you can beat Samurai Cutter. So I will like it, in this case what he states, he will like it to also have a bit of tracking to the right side. So that way you don't have inconsistencies when you're trying to go for Samurai Cutter and it whiffing. Because if let's say I'm slated to the right side here. Well, I hit right there. You see there, it whiffs. But it also whiffs at a certain distance as well. As you see right there, because even though the light trails show that it went through the leg, it will still whiff anyways, because the actual hit range of the move is not exactly right there. And this is something personal that I kind of think that they should also fix, kind of reduce, is the overall actual light trails. So that way, you actually see the actual sign of where the move is actually going through. Because if that's not the case, then they should at least make it so that it's able to hit, if you see the light trails hitting the leg. He also mentions, like, I forgot to mention this actually, when he talked about 4, 1, plus 2, he also talked about that the move no longer heat engages, right? Instead, he mentions that he also would prefer that 2, 1 heat engages instead. So if, let's say, you get the counter hit from 2, 1, you get the heat engage at the last hit. I'm not too sure if I like this idea, to be honest, and he also mentions that while he gets the heat engager from that move, from that strain, that is also minus 12. It's minus 9 now, but if it gets the heat engage, it should be minus 12, he says. Again, I'm not too sure about this, if it should be added in, and that it should also be nerfed to the point where it's minus 12 on block. I don't know. I'm neutral on this. I can't say no or yes to it. I just think that if they were to do it, it's fine. You know, it's whatever. Uh, and then, of course, the down forward one to also have better tracking. Because it actually is quite lenient on both sides. You can actually get away from uh, sidewalking it to both sides, depending on the character. Most characters, they can t actually get away if you size up to the left side. But to the right side, it is quite lenient, and you can actually step it. He is stating that since a lot of down forward ones in the game tend to be very hard to step anyways, for a move like his to be very easy to step to the right side, he's stating that to, have, to make it have better tracking at least. So that way, you can actually hit opponents that are trying to sidestep him to his right side, to his weakest side. But I don't know, I, to be honest, I don't understand, I, not that I don't understand it, I just think that I, I don't I don't fully agree and I don't disagree with the idea of making it have better tracking. I, I, I'm neutral on this as well. The one that I'm not neutral in is that he mentions about down 2-2 two, two, to have better tracking on this move. Now this I do agree with. This move can be kind of inconsistent with the tracking of the move. Sometimes when you're doing certain combos, the move will just whiff depending on how off axis you are against the opponent. So if you're even slightly off axis and let's say depending on how off axis the opponent is as well, and you try to perform down 2-2, there's a big chance that you will end up whiffing the initial hit itself or just the follow up of the hit. So you won't get the combo to actually, you know, perform the overall uh, fillers of your combo against the opponent. Having better tracking would actually help a lot in getting your combos to work often in these moments where you're off axis or if the opponent is slightly off axis from you. Then he mentions about a, a bug where if let's say you're near the wall and let's say you manage to land your 3, 2, 1 plus 2, and depending on your ender that is, 
Like, if you were to perform your ender against the bears, specifically, you will get behind them. Now, I've had this issue at times, depending on which ender I use against the bears, that suddenly I'm just right behind it. It doesn't happen often, but when it does happen, you are placed behind them instead of being placed in front of them. So, it's an issue that still persists with Yoshimitsu now. And then the last thing, and this is a, this is a, a wish list of my own, I really would love if Bandai, Harada, Michael Mary, whatever the fuck is developing the game, please bring back CD2, Tornado Bound. Please bring that back to Tekken 8. Tekken 7, you, a lot of his combos, he used to perform like something like this. To get his combo going and get the bound. Now it doesn't bound anymore, and I'm kind of sad that they removed the fact that CD2 no longer bounds. And yes, there's gonna be some pandemic fool on the comment section saying that yes, you can bound people with CD2. Only on counter hit. Only on counter hit does it bound. We're talking about when you're in a combo, when you're performing, that it bounds. So I will like the fact that they bring this back in Tekken 8. Yes, it might not have much use because we have moves like, let's say, you're down for 1 2 1. And of course, you're down 2 2 2. But maybe we can find out some kind of combo routes where there is use of using CD2 against the opponent. I would love to see if we can do that again in, the, in this game. Now, for one other nerf that I forgot to mention is that Yoshimitsu has a glitch. I don't know if it's a glitch or a bug. Whenever the opponent ends up blocking 3 1, right? And let's say you enter into your Dragonfly stance. So let's say you pop heat, and you go for 3-1 into forward 2 in Dragonfly Stance. This is actually faster than your regular state version of using 3-1 into forward 2. Both of these moves are different in terms of their overall attack frames. So if I use 3-1 into forward 2 in Dragonfly Stance, it works as intended, right? It's exactly as the attack frames state in the uh, HUD, right? It's 20 frames. And it's also the same way while in heat. It's 20 frames. But if you perform 3-1 into forward 2, it's still the same. But in heat, it's faster. It's faster by around 2 frames. So, if the op opponent decides to go for a jab against you, for, let's say they just want to jab you out because you, maybe they think you're going to go for Dragonfly 4 instead, then they will actually get hit by the initial move. If you don't believe me, let's set up the punish. I'm gonna go in heat and go for 3-1. And I can then launch punish the opponent. But I can't do so in the regular state. See? I'm gonna get hit off of the air. So I think this is a bug. They need to fix it i don't know what they're gonna do to fix it but all i know is that it's faster one heat if you suddenly perform three one enter into dragonfly stance and perform forward two it becomes faster by i think around it turns into 17 frames on startup instead of it being 20 frames so unless they this is an intended feature then they should fix that in the hud or they should fix the bug if it is a bug and make it how it's intended that it's actually 20 frames and that's about it. That's overall the list of what Kobe has showcased in his uh, Google Docs. Overall, I do agree with a lot of the things that he's mentioned in the list. Some things I feel neutral of, other things I don't agree with. I think that these things do and will help Yoshimitsu out to being a more balanced character. Biggest thing that makes Yoshimitsu so tough to fight against, at least for those that are having a lot of trouble against him, is that he has high damage, he has a lot of utilities, and he's overall a character that, that requires uh, a lot of mental gymnastics to really figure out how to fight against Yoshimitsu because he's very unorthodox as a character in this game. He's always been this unorthodox character in Tekken, but in Tekken 8, because of how fast the gameplay is, Yoshimitsu is way too strong at this point, and he needs to be toned down so that that way he feels more fair as a character. But if they will tone him down overall as a character, they need to give him something to help him out, at least in the categories that if they were to reduce his damage heavily and to nerf some of the tools that he has, then at least giving him some newer tools or at least something new to help him out so that way he still has some means to fight against the opponent. I think at least some kind of give and take type of situation, right? 
So that's about all about this video. I hope you guys enjoyed the discussion with the you know nerfs and buffs of Yoshimitsu. If you liked the video, give the video a like, dislike if you want to, subscribe and you see more of my shit. And yeah, stay tuned, stay safe. Thank <laughs> you.